Hey guys, it's Cameron Bobier. Thanks for watching Moto America on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and like the channel. Interesting to see after they threw the red flag if they're gonna go. So here we go, lights on and away we go. Couple front wheels in the air. Who's gonna get the nod? It's the 33 of Kyle Wyman. Who's going to lead us? And Jay, this is an interesting battle between Harley Davidson and Indian because the way that these two motorcycles make speed are significantly different as that Harley Davidson seems to handle these S sections and these switchbacks a little bit better than the Indian. But when we get to that back straightaway, that number one plate has got some motor underneath them. Yeah, I believe it's Bobby Fong that's jumped into second place there. Yeah, I it is. On that? So you are correct. Bobby Fong has. You know, he's chasing down. He was another one that didn't make the King of the Baggers challenge race earlier on today. So both him and Kyle Wyman, neither one of them made that start of that race that was won by Tyler O'Hara, our defending champion there. You see him right now in third place. Bobby Fong gets shot up out of the seat as they come out of turn seven. Kyle Wyman on this Harley Davidson, Greg, talking with him. Talking yesterday or this morning actually about it just looks simple to me. When I watched his qualifying times and his laps yesterday, the laps just looked like they came very easy. And like you said, the difference is here. The Indian seems a little quicker. The Harley seems a little more nimble. So Bobby Fong in that Sack Mile SDI Racing Roland Sands Indian Challenger. But it's this guy out front right now on that Harley Davidson Screaming Eagle Road Glide. Number 33, Kyle Wyman showed up with this unreal paint job. It's so cool to see in real life that Harley Davidson Orange. Bobby is also back with a new crew chief this season. Robert Ward will be his crew chief for the remainder of the Mission King of the Baggers series. It looks like Tyler O'Hare is going up under the inside of Bobby Fong now. Yeah, that's what kind of a big pass, <laughs> Hannah. I, would, I look like I'm glad you were able to see that. As Tyler O'Hare had that thing sideways as he slid up the inside of the 50 in turn 10 there. O'Hare doing a, a job trying to get himself back up to the back of Kyle Wyman. Looking here, Hayden Gillum again, 30.7, 30.9. All these guys in the 30s, except for O'Hara. So 30.6 for your race leader. And then you had O'Hara at a 31.1. And then everybody, the next three spots, 30.8, 30.9, 30.7 for Gillum. So it's battle for second. Looks like it's going to start heating up between O'Hara and Fong. And that can help the two boys behind. You can see a battle for about four guys here battling for second place. When I talk to some people, 30.3 for Kyle. He just keeps getting quicker in front. This battle now is really that's, that's starting to That's quicker than his up. qualifying lap, by the way. He did a 130.4. So, Kyle. Yeah, and this morning, I think he went, uh, yeah, he went uh, around that time. Yeah, in second qualifying. So, yeah, but the thing is, 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 is that these bikes are actually really nimble, and they handle really well. I've talked to a few different, different people, magazines, uh, uh, editors, and things that have ridden them, and they've said it's incredible what you can actually get out of them. And in talking to, to some of the guys that are racing them, these guys that you see here on the screen, it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out. Raspoli last time got into the turn 10, as you said, pretty deep. You can see Gillum now wants to take a shot at James, and he's going to do it as he comes down into turn 10. Oh. Wow. That's a flat track experience from Gillum as well. Yep. Keep in mind, between Kyle Wyman, Tyler O'Hara, Bobby Fong, James Raspoli, Hayden Gillum, how many national championships across a couple different disciplines do these riders have? White flag out for Kyle Wyman. He backs it down just a little bit of 130.937. Has a nice, comfortable four-second gap, but it's Tyler O'Hara who's trying to hold on. Boy, this group really bunched up a lap ago, and now O'Hara pulling the pin and trying to get away so he doesn't come under attack from Bobby Fong. With the lack of track time, I mean, even those couple laps for that challenge race, Bobby Fong having a great run. It's good to see him with a full-time ride on his Indian Challenger. We gotta think if Gillum can just get close enough, he's gonna take a shot at one of them. He'll have a double bike draft as they go down the back straightaway. O'Hara gets dangerously close to that white line, Greg, on the exit of turn five there as he came up over the top of the hill. Into turn seven we go. It's the last run. This is the battle for second. As you can see, the 33 is gone. He is checked out. Now what's going to happen as we come into turn 10? It's Indian Challengers going after it between O'Hara and Bobby Fong. Full factory bike, the number one plate, and that privateer machine of Fong. He's looking for some room around Tyler O'Hara. There's Fong on the brakes, but look at Tyler O'Hara. So deep on the brakes. And the Harley-Davidson of Hayden Gillum can't do anything with him. Oh. Look at Fong with a good drive. 
Now coming down the hill. Here he comes. On the gas, spin in the tire, wheel in the air. It's Kyle Wyman who takes a magnificent victory here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. And as we come across the line, it'll be Tyler O'Hara and Hayden Gillum able to sneak by Bobby Fong. So Tyler O'Hara will stand second on the podium. The book ended by a couple of Harley Davidsons, Kyle Wyman and Hayden Gillum.